Hello everybody, this is Dee from Dee's Cute and Crafty. I'm back with another video for you guys today. I am still crafting for uh, bumblebees and sunflowers. I'm not tired of it yet. I hope you're not either. I still have things that I need to get out of my head creatively, so that's why we're still here. Eventually, I think I will get into some uh, Fourth of July crafting, but I'm not ready yet. So let's just keep going with what we're what we have today. I have some flowers from my stash. I will be using this craft paper from Hobby Lobby. I have a piece of tin foil from a Dollar Tree cookie sheet. Some of the Dollar Tree bumblebee burlap. I have this little gnome that I reworked. I got him from Dollar General, and he was for fall. He had an orange hat. I just changed out his hat, added a flower, some jute cord, one of my little bumblebees, um, and then just some black and yellow scrap ribbon that I had. I didn't show you that. I already had that done. I am going to be using some of these little wooden mason jars that I've had my stash for a while, and they are from Dollar Tree. You guys already know, if you do not have these mason jars and you cannot get a hold of them, you can use what? Come on, say it with me. You can use cardboard. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. So just, you know, cut some out by hand with some cardboard if you don't have these exact ones. So I have cut out my little 10 pieces for the lid from that, that little metal cookie sheet. I have already traced out my papers and got those all nice and ready to go and my burlap I cut that out as well I'm just going to use some hot glue to get that burlap adhered to this little wood mason jar and I'm not worried about the hot glue showing through because we're going to cover all of that up just be careful of course you guys know when you're using hot glue and using burlap you want to use your finger protectors because it will seep through and it'll burn you and also, when you are using that cookie sheet, that little metal, it gets really sharp when you cut it with your scissors. So please be careful with that because you can, you know, cut your finger really bad. So we don't want to do that. Now I'm just going back and I'm trimming down everything I don't need. Just cleaning it up so it's really cute, nice and neat. little bit of cleanup you guys out of the three that I'm going to show you today this one is hands down my favorite yes it is it has so many pieces and texture and dimension and I love it those are all the things that I love in a really good DIY so hands down my favorite you guys let me know in the comments which one is your favorite because I have to know so now we're just going to hot glue the 10 pieces down on top, our little lids. Please use your finger protectors. This metal gets really hot. Ask me how I know. So you guys, Mother's Day is next weekend already. So I hope you guys have gotten out and picked up a few things for your mom or some flowers. Um, us moms, and uh, you moms, obviously, love it when your kids bring you something you can plant. I love getting a flower that I can plant and that way I have it forever. Um, hydrangeas or azaleas or hostas, anything that you can put in the yard to have that reminder. Or take your mom out to dinner. It's gonna be packed if you try to do that. But Howard and I took his mom out early. We took her out yesterday. Yesterday was Saturday. We took her out to dinner. Um, we took her out early because I'm going to North Carolina next weekend so that I can spend Mother's Day with my oldest daughter up there. And I'll see my youngest daughter today. As I'm voicing this over, I'm trying to get done so I can go see her. Today is her birthday, so we're going to celebrate her birthday and Mother's Day at the same time. So you guys, do something special for your mom. They deserve it. So now that I have everything all attached, I got my paper, my burlap down, I got my lids on. I'm just going to stack these um, with the burlap one on top. You guys, I did not tell you that I would be using some 
pool noodle, but as you can see, <laughs> I'm using some of the orange pool noodle. If you guys get a hold of this, save it because it's good for Easter and Christmas. For Easter, you can make carrots with it, and for Christmas, you can do the carrot nose for the snowman. So if you find some orange pool noodle this summer, put it in your stash. We'll be using it later. But I cut off a little piece of pool noodle for each one of the mason jars to mimic the shape of the lid, and I just hot glued it underneath the lid. Um, and you have to hold on to it for a while until it sets up, or sort of just raise up off of whatever you're trying to glue that pool noodle to. But we had to have somewhere to put our flowers. So I just measured out the length of the flower or the stem and tucked it down in that pool noodle. I had no issues with its stain whatsoever. So we're just doing a little flower arrangement there. And then I'm going to take my little bumblebee gnome and I am going to put him in the middle in the mason jar with the bumblebees. Here you see me measuring out my flowers, cutting off the excess stem that I don't need. I'm going to measure out the gnome and break that skewer stick. And with the gnome, since he is a little heavier than the flowers, I'm going to make sure that I secure him very well. I'm going to stick him down in that pool noodle, but it was still kind of turning in there. It, it just wasn't stable and we can't have that. So I am going to use some hot glue and some masking tape. I love doing those two together. It really secures whatever you're trying to get to stick or to hold in place. It works really well. Just a couple pieces just to make sure we're good you guys thank you so much for watching my last video and all your sweet comments about those um, rain boots I <laughs> I really wasn't sure what they were gonna turn out like I just had a vision in my head and I had to get it out and so I just got to work on those and they are absolutely adorable. I'm glad you guys like them as much as I do. Thank you for all your sweet words about those rain boots, or I was calling them gardening boots, but whichever. Thank you so much, you guys. So we're just arranging things, getting those flowers tucked in, trying to make sure my gnome is sitting the way I want him to sit. Just doing a little bit of fussy work really is what's going on right here. So while I'm doing that, I'd like to take this time to say thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome to all my new subscribers. Thank you for choosing D's Cute and Crafty. I'm so blessed and happy to have you here. Don't forget to do all the things, hit the notification bell, so you are notified every time a video goes up from D's Cute and Crafty. And to my ride or dies, the ones that have been with me since the beginning of my journey, thank you, thank you, thank you to you as well for always coming back, for hitting that thumbs up, for talking to me in the comments. You guys are amazing and you help my channel grow. And I'm so grateful for that. Thank you for the shares. You guys are great. Thank you. So here are my little bumblebees, the ones that I got from Hobby Lobby. I'm running out, you guys. I have four left and that just won't do. So I said, you know what? I can make these. I know I can. I've made bumblebees from beads before. So we're just going to make a couple new ones. I have a yellow bead and a black bead. Both of these uh, beads came from Hobby Lobby or Hobby Lobby. They came from Dollar Tree in different little bags of things. I pulled them from my stash. So I'm going to take that yellow bead and carefully using my wire cutters, I'm going to cut it in half. I'm also going to cut that tiny little black bead in half. And I am just going to make my stripes on the back of that yellow bead. And because you cut your bead in half, of course, you can make two bumblebees. So I'm just going to do my stripes with the marker with one of the little permanent markers. And then I have some of my hot glue gun wings and we're gonna use those for this bumblebee. And I'm gonna use two of them for this DIY. I'm gonna put one on the sign and one on, one is already on the gnome's hat. I love the details, you guys. It really makes your DIY pop and it looks more like you bought it at a boutique or a store, then it looks like a homemade DIY. If you just give a little bit of attention to the details, it really makes it look store-bought. So 
So I'm just going to put two little white eyes on my bumblebee. They don't show up really well on camera, but they do show up in person. And there it is. There's my bumblebee. So I took a piece of what else? Cardboard. And I painted it with my chiffon cream paint by Rust-Oleum. And I gave it a rough coat because I love when the cardboard shows through. It looks more rustic and it looks like wood to me. And I just cut the ends off of each corner to give it a, a nicer look. And I just wrote the word welcome and I use my little faux calligraphy technique that I do where I make my downstrokes a lot thicker. And I did it in pencil and I'm going to go back and make it all nice, crisp, and clean in a Sharpie marker. You guys could write whatever you want on your little plaque or even not put one on at all if you don't want to. You could put hello spring, just hello, welcome to our hive, be blessed, be happy, be thankful, whatever you want to put on yours. But I just thought I would put welcome on it. And I'm just going to hot glue it down to the center of that mason jar and attach my little beat it bee to the corner of my sign. I'm going to add a jute cord hanger to the back. And this little beauty is done and ready to be displayed. I absolutely love it. It turned out just so cute. I hope you guys recreate this one. It was really fun. There's the little bumblebee on the gnome's hat. A little flower, some jute cord. That was easy to redo. It was just really an orange hat and a jute cord bow. And I just took it all off. Actually, I covered the hat, but I took off that jute cord bow so I could reuse it. How cute. Moving on to DIY number two, we're going to be using one of the wooden eggs that Dollar Tree came out, one of the wood egg signs. They came out with it this year. A piece of that plastic garden gate fence, of course, some cardboard, a wooden blessed word, some nautical cord, ribbon of choice, and some of this fabric from Dollar Tree. They have this new fuzzy fabric out this year. You guys saw me do a DIY with it, making a really big um, sunflower. So I'm going to use the black the golden color and the white for this DIY. So I'm just going to start with this Dollar Tree wood egg and we're going to use the brown side which is the back because we're going to cover it with this nautical cord and just in case any of it shows through you won't see it because both of the pieces that we're putting together are brown. If you use the white side you might see it. So we're just going to go around it and get it all covered. We're making a beehive you guys and Here's my cardboard. I just freehanded some wings, a bee body, and a little circle for the head. You guys have seen me make bumblebees so many times on this channel. I made a lot of them last year using the same technique with the cardboard. The only difference is I painted those. I'm going to use this fabric for these to give it some texture and some dimension. So cut out your bee shape out of some cardboard, and then we're just going to cover it with the fabric alternating the black and the yellow for the bee body. We're going to do the black for the bee head, and then we're going to do the white for the bee wings. I'm also going to cover that little piece of garden gate that I had left for the bee antenna. I used it for another DIY, so I'm just using really scraps of what I have with that. And I'm just going to cover it and use it to make my bee antenna. This fabric is very forgiving. So if you have to patch or piece something together, you will not be able to see it. When the DIY is complete, you will really have to look for it to find where you may have had to patch some material together. So I love this fabric because it is very forgiving. To make my circle, you guys, I just took one of my um, large paint bottles like one of my um, Waverly paint bottles, the bigger ones, and just traced around it, made a circle using that. 
Now that I've got everything all glued down, and I did use hot glue, I didn't want to Mod Podge it, I didn't want to use fabric glue, hot glue worked just fine, because you can't see it. It doesn't mess up your project or make it lumpy in any way. So then we just trim off what we don't need. I'm going to glue my wings together first, and then I'm going to glue the body on top of those wings, and that also helps hold that in place. And then I'm going to glue down the head and add my little antenna. This one was almost my first choice, but the gnome won out. The gnome with the mason jars, it just it was just so pretty to me. So just hot gluing down this part right here, the antenna. Here's my little bumblebee. And I'm going to take a piece of that black fabric and make the opening to the hive. And I just did like a little oval shape straight on the bottom, oval at the top. I'm just going to hot glue that down in the center. I felt that the egg the egg sign from Easter was perfect for this hive because it gives you that oval kind of hive shape that I was looking for. So it just worked out perfectly. I'm just going to lay my bless word to the side because it, I want placement for my bumblebee where he's going to sit. So I just like to place everything out first before I start gluing anything. And now I'm going to take my pencil and mark where the bee is going to sit on the hive so that I know where the glue goes. Because I'm going to have it sitting, as you can see, off to the side. It's not going to sit completely on the hive because he's too big. <laughs> you want him to sit on the hive, you have to make a smaller one. But I wanted a big bumblebee. I wanted a statement bumblebee. So that's why I did it. Just going to hold that down for a little bit until it sets up. And I thought the bumblebee needed a little bow, so I just took some of my buffalo check ribbon and tied a little bow and hot glued it to the bee. And now I'm just going to paint my word blessed with the apple barrel sunset gold because it matches really well with the gold that's on the bumblebee. You could do it in white, you could do it in black, but I like the gold better. So now I'm going to make a bow, and I'm doing this bow in real time. I did not speed this part up because a wonderful subscriber asked me to make a bow in real time. So I'm just going to do a zigzag where you fold it under and fold it over. I'm doing this particular piece of ribbon this way because it's the same on both sides. Sometimes ribbon is patterned on one side but then not on the other. This ribbon is exactly the same on both sides so it allows me to do that over and under kind of zigzag um, technique to get my loops on either side. With this other piece of ribbon you're going to see that I'm not going to do it that way because it's not patterned on both sides. And I love to use wired ribbon because it's going to give me that fluff that I want. See what I'm talking about, how the pattern is only on one side of the ribbon? So when it is like that, I just fold both ends together in the middle. And then I stack my loops. Now I want this ribbon that is going to be on top of the buffalo check to be a smaller loop so that you can see both ribbons when you fluff out your bow. So I always make sure that the ribbons stack from biggest to smallest. If I use the third ribbon, it would be smaller than the sunflower ribbon. But we're only going to use two ribbons today, and that's going to give us two loops on each side of this bow. So you make your loops and you stack them. And then I make my tails. I just take a long piece of ribbon and then a shorter piece of ribbon for the second tail. I make my dovetails and I stack my ribbons. When I make my dovetails, I fold my fabric end to end and then I fold it in 
half. And all I do is make an angle cut from the bottom corner to the top of the ribbon. And that gives me my dovetails. They're super simple to make. So once I have my loops the way that I want them, and I have my dovetails cut, I stack it. This is the easiest bow that I know how to make. I just stack everything together. I'm just eyeballing it, making sure it's as even as I can get it. I'm going to take my jute cord and I'm just going to pinch everything together in the middle. Just like that. A good pinch in the center. And then I'm going to wrap my jute cord around the center where I've got it pinched. Just place that under your thumb so you can keep holding everything in place. And once I feel like it's centered the way I want it, I'm going to fold it over. And I only fold it over so that I can tie it in the back. It just makes it easier for me to hold on to and tie it if I fold it over and hold it in one hand. That way I know where my center is. Just going to tie a knot. And turn it over and start fluffing everything out. And I'll cut off the excess jute cord. I know there's a lot of different ways you can make your bows. You can do um, the awareness uh, cancer ribbon kind of bow. You can do a notched bow. There's so many ways, but this is what I know. And this is the one that I do best when I make a bow. So you'll always see me just about 99% of the time make my bow in this way. Now I'm just going to pull my tails down, pull them forward so you can see them. And it's done. This is my bow for this DIY. Now we're going to speed it back up and finish this video off. Finish off this DIY. I'm just going to add a dollop of hot glue to the top of this beehive and glue that bow in place. Pulling those tails down fluffing out the edges of that bow, fluffing those loops, and making it pretty. At the last minute, I decided, hey, let's throw in a sunflower. Why not? So I grab one from my stash, and I'm going to hot glue it to the center of the bow. All done and ready to be displayed. definitely was almost my first choice but it is my second choice so actually these DIYs are in order as to how I like them first second and third You guys, if you're enjoying this content, don't forget to give it a big fat thumbs up. I truly appreciate you. Moving on to DIY number three and the last one of this video. This one, if you blink, you're going to miss it. It is, it's almost done for you. Literally. All we're doing is hot gluing some pieces together. So I have this Hello Hexagon. Is it a hexagon? Octagon? Whatever. <laughs> I'm not sure. Six points, eight points. It's 
It's a stop sign shape. It's for the beehive. It's for the honeycomb. That's what it is. So I have a gold metal hello that I've had in my stash for years. Didn't know what I was going to do with it until yesterday. And then I have the honeycomb shape that's in the black kind of um, wood, like a barn wood kind of look. And it's beaded. It's really cute. And then I have these little um, bumblebees. And these came from Joanne Fabrics, these little bumblebee picks. But the other two pieces came from Dollar Tree. Again, this DIY is almost done for you, literally. So all I'm going to do is hot glue, just a little bit of hot glue, my little bumblebees to the black sign. And I love how the bumblebees have that filigree kind of look because they pop on that black. You don't have to paint or do anything. Just glue them down. Then I'm just going to place the hello on top of that. And look, it fits perfectly. Both those pieces are from, are from Dollar Tree, and it fits perfectly. So I'm going to use hot glue, but you guys know hot glue and metal don't really work all that well. You've got to work fast when you're using hot glue. So because of that, and because I know it will pop off, I'm also going to use the Fix-All Dollar Tree glue on every point of this side. And then I'm going to hurry up and put my hot glue down and lay it down because I want the short-term, long-term hold. I want the hot glue to hold it until the fix-all sets up. And it worked out perfectly. I had no issues with it. So now I'm just doing a little bit of cleanup where the fix-all kind of like smeared through. And I'm cleaning up the little glue webs from the hot glue. I'm going to put a bow on this one, a very simple bow. One loop, no, two loops. I'm going to use um, some wired ribbon that I got from Joann's. And then I'm going to use some twill with bumblebees on it that I got from Joann's as well. Not Joann's. That was Hobby Lobby some years ago. It's, you know, ribbon that's in my stash, you guys. So I'm always trying to remember where I got it because sometimes it's years old, the things that I'm bringing to you. I've just had them. So I'm going to make my bow. Make my loops, pinch it together, tie it off with some jute cord, and then that twill kind of ribbon that I'm using, or fabric, it's really fabric more than it is ribbon. I just tied a shoestring bow, and I'm going to hot glue that to the other bow, and then hot glue both of those to the corner. This one's done. It doesn't get any easier, easier than this. We didn't paint anything. We didn't have to punch any holes in anything. We didn't even use any cardboard. Oh my goodness, how could I not? But we didn't need it. Simple and cute. We didn't even have to make a hanger. It came with a beautiful beaded hanger. And that is it. This DIY is done and ready to be displayed. It turned out adorable. I normally like to do things in three, so I would have preferred to have had three bumblebees um, under the hello, but there just wasn't room. I felt like it would have been too crowded and would have taken away from that black background. So I just put two on there. So cute. You guys, here's the final reveal of everything that I've made for you today. I enjoyed it so much, and I hope you guys did too. Again, please don't forget, like, share, comment, subscribe, do all the things that make my channel grow. I am forever grateful, blessed, and happy to have you here. I hope you guys are having a beautiful, blessed Sunday. I certainly am. I'm excited to go spend the rest of the day with my daughter for her birthday. I hope you guys are doing something fun. I hope you're out and about and enjoying the weather because it is beautiful. You guys, as always, be blessed. Stay safe. And until I see you in my next video, craft something beautiful today, you guys. Bye.